Good morning, everyone. And uh, on behalf of the New York Times, I'm delighted to welcome you to DealBook, playing for the long term. This is our flagship business and policy conference, and we are thrilled to once again bring together so many innovative and dynamic leaders from across industries. Before we start, a few words of thanks. This event is made possible by the generous support of our premier sponsors, AT&T Business, Intel, and United Airlines, and our supporting sponsors, BMO and Pacific Life. Thanks also to Jazz at Lincoln Center, our host for the second year in a row, and my thanks to all of you for being here today. Some of you may recall that last year's conference was held just two days after the presidential election. Back then, all of us were understandably focused on the profound changes that were sure to lie ahead. And at the times, we were already preparing for what we knew would be a dizzying year in political news. I'm proud to say that one year later, we've risen to the challenge. Our remarkable White House reporters have broken one major story after another, from Donald Trump Jr.'s previously undisclosed meeting with a Kremlin-connected lawyer, to FBI Director James Comey's memos on the circumstances surrounding his firing. The Times' is reporting has been thorough, aggressive, and fair. Truly journalism at its finest. Beyond Washington, We've continued to offer our readers the comprehensive and in-depth coverage they need to understand an increasingly complex world. We've reported on the ground from the horror and crisis in Las Vegas to the Caribbean to Myanmar. I can say without exaggeration that our investigative exposés on Harvey Weinstein and Bill O'Reilly fundamentally changed the way the world views sexual harassment. And we continue to deliver all of this journalism in new and innovative ways reaching across platforms to meet our readers where and how they live. Our commitment to investing in our newsroom, to investing in our great reporting, has resulted in the Times becoming by far the most successful news subscription business in the world. Earlier this month, we reported a record 3.5 million subscriptions to Times products, more than ever in our history, and indeed, more than ever in any American newspaper that has existed, even going back to the golden age of print journalism. The theme of today's conference, playing for the long term, reflects our own philosophy as we continue to build and invest in quality journalism. As part of that investment, We've expanded our business coverage and staff over the past year. Among many great new hires, we've welcomed two exceptional journalists who have taken a leading role in helping to elevate our business coverage. Rebecca Blumenstein, who actually is sitting right there, joined the Times as deputy managing editor in February. She came from the Wall Street Journal, and she's a blessing to have. And Ellen Pollack came on board as our new editor of Business Day in April. Ellen joined us from Bloomberg, where she served as editor-in-chief uh, of Business Week. Our leading reporting on the machinations inside Uber, about which I'm sure you will hear more when Dara comes to, on stage uh, later this morning, and the internal conversations that led America's most powerful CEOs to step down from President Trump's business councils are just two examples of our reinvigorated business report. Over the course of today's coverage, you will have the privilege of hearing directly from some of the biggest newsmakers in the world, from tech, finance, and a range of other sections, sectors. Excuse me. We expect many of them will make headlines, and we'll get this conference going in a minute. But before we begin, I'd like to give special thanks to the brilliant DealBook team that worked tirelessly to craft today's program and make this conference a reality. And my sincere gratitude to today's visionary host and DealBook founder, Andrew Ross Sorkin. Andrew has cultivated this event since its inception, bringing DealBook's journalism alive on stage. Andrew also has some exciting news to share today about what's on the horizon for DealBook, but I'll leave that to him. 
So now let me welcome Andrew to the stage. Andrew. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you, buddy. Here. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody, uh, for being here today. Uh, we are here. We do have a very exciting day ahead. Let me uh, just give you a sense of what's on tap, give you a little bit of a preview of what's coming up. Uh, we have uh, speakers from all over, uh, and as uh, Arthur said, I imagine they may make lots of headlines today, or at least uh, that's what we're hoping for. Uh, just to give you a taste of who's coming up, we're going to hear from Howard Schultz from Starbucks in just a little minute. Melody Hobson of Aerial Investments is here. We're also going to be talking to the new CEO of Uber, who has never spoken publicly uh, before. Uh, we're also going to talk to Kenneth Chenault of American Express. We're also going to be speaking with Larry Fink of BlackRock. The shark himself, Mark Cuban, will take the stage after him. And then in the afternoon, an interview I know many people are waiting for. We're going to have a conversation with the CEO of AT&T, Randall Stevenson, uh, who is on the front page of today's New York Times and newspapers all over the world this morning in the battle uh, with the Department of Justice. And we will talk about that and what, where that deal is going. We also have Oscar Munoz from United here. We have Brian Krasanich of Intel here. We're going to have a very special conversation with the merchant prince himself. Mickey Drexler is in the house, and I am very excited uh, to speak with him. Um, and then I want to introduce you to Monica Bickert of Facebook. She's in charge of policy and anti-terrorism, and she's the person who's actually in the room dealing with all the issues that you've been reading about uh, over the past several months, and we will speak with her about what is going on in Facebook and how they are thinking about uh, the challenges ahead. And then finally, we're going to talk to Lorraine Powell Jobs, businesswoman and philanthropist, um, really a, a remarkable influence that I'm not sure is fully appreciated on what's going on in the world today. And then finally, a conversation with Jack Dorsey of Square and Twitter. I promise you, it will be a little more than 140 characters, but potentially less than 280. But we will talk to him about that as well. Uh, before we begin all of these conversations, we have a little bit of news to share. And, and I know that Arthur had uh, referenced it earlier. Today, we're announcing uh, something that's really exciting for us, uh, which is the reimagination, really, of DealBook. Many of you have been with us uh, since I started sending out DealBook as an email uh, back in 2001 in my pajamas at 5 a.m. in the morning uh, about the world of deals. But the world of business has changed since then. Um, and over the past several years, especially, business has become so inter, 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 inextricably linked with policy. Uh, in Washington, in Brussels, in Beijing, in a way that it really has never been before. And it's been reflected, actually, in the conversations we've had on this stage for the last six years. And so today, we're relaunching DealBook with a focus on that intersection of these cross currents, as well as a broader frame on the world of business, technology, policy, the economy, philanthropy, and corporate governance. We want to approach the news every morning in the way that you guys are all thinking about it. And yes, I promise you, promise you, we are going to continue covering deals as much as we ever have before. If you are not one of our 300,000 subscribers, I would gratefully uh, ask you to become one. And if you are, thank you. Uh, we are grateful. Finally, if you'd indulge me in my own thank yous, because I have to do it. We spend so much time putting this together, everybody. Uh, there is a huge team that makes DealBook happen every day, uh, and, in this, and in particular, also this event. Uh, the conference team is amazing. Darthea Harry's right over here. Uh, you all know Tamara. I don't know. Tamara, come out here if you could. Oh, there she is. If you haven't emailed with Tamara, um, I couldn't live without her. She makes this day happen, um, and I, my, my gratitude uh, to her forever. Uh, Kate Rooney of CNBC is my producer, and she helps me uh, with so many of these interviews. And then there is the reporting team uh, of DealBook at the New York Times. And a special shout out to a guy I know many of you have been reading for many years, Michael Delimber said, who continues to do such exceptional work for us uh, over all of these years, and really exemplified by the scoop that he had yesterday on the AT&T. Uh, DOJ news, which really exemplifies also where DealBook is headed and those cross currents between uh, Washington and Wall Street. Uh, finally, also want to just give a quick shout out to Ellen Pollack and Rebecca Blumenstein, who have shepherded uh, this redesign along with the masthead led by Joe Kahn and, of course, our executive editor, and the New York Times' COO, Meredith Levian, and our own CEO, Mark Thompson, have been tremendous advocates uh, for this from the beginning. Uh, I say it every year. But the biggest thanks, I just kissed him on the way in. Uh, I've been with him since I've been 18 years old. Uh, the Salzberger family, Arthur Salzberger, now AG, it is a privilege to work for this company. Uh, I truly do believe uh, the New York Times is a national treasure. So thank you, Arthur. 
and thank you for everything you've done. Uh, finally, onto the program. So now we will begin. Um, the person that I wanted to start the conversation with is Howard Schultz. And the reason I wanted to do that is in part um, because of something that he did. He, he made a video, a film, a short one, and I want to show it to you. Uh, he did it about two years ago. Um, and given the world, the divided world that we're in today, um, the biggest challenge that's facing business is just how politically divided things are and how do you actually uh, manage through that. And that's, that's where I wanted to start this conversation. When he made this video, by the way, which you're going to see in a moment, um, people were, business people weren't so explicitly talking about politics. And he decided to wade into the conversation. And that's where we're going to start this morning. Take a look at this.